Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm excited to say that I'm doing a collab with Sir Willow. You might know his Disney channel. Um, one of his most popular videos is, it, what's the title of it again? It's um, uh, the what, groups that cast members are afraid of or something like that. Groups that cast members are afraid of. Oh my word, I love this video. And he has some other great videos that you definitely have to check out. So funny to me, especially if you have ever worked in Disney, you, you'll be able to relate so much to his videos. And it's just fascinating to see someone else's perspective. He didn't work in Disney Entertainment. He worked, you know, in a different, you know, although now PhotoPass has integrated with um, Disney Entertainment. Well, anyway, let me let me just start jumping into the questions for you here. So, did you only ever work in PhotoPass? At Disney, yes. Um... I, I kind of joke that part of our photo pass training was partially being trained as character attendant. Um, I did do some informal, unofficial training as a, a parade attendant. So that way, when we were working the parade routes, I could be more effective in crowd control and helping clear the streets. But that wasn't official. So yeah, pretty much everything I did at Disney, officially at least, was photo pass. Oh, wow. So did you ever actually work the parade shift? No. Not, not actually as a parade attendant. I didn't. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And so another question I have, what was the assumed stereotype about people who worked in Disney Entertainment? Like what, like when you were, before you actually knew or you were in there, like what, what do you remember being talked about? What I, re the one thing I do remember is that the uh, performers, in particular the stage performers, uh, it was what, equity? Yeah. I think is what they were called. Yeah. They kind of had a perception of really being kind of in their own little world. I don't want to say stuck up, but um, like they didn't socialize with anybody else. They kept to themselves. <laughs> yes. And didn't really feel that so much with the other entertainment people. Um, they were kind of a world of their own, but that was because of the type of job they did. And working photo pass, we would also see ride operators and the one thing I picked up in everything I did was that every little group at Disney was really kind of its own little world. Mm. And so we just kind of like, okay, that's their world, and this is their world over there, and that's the ride operators. And and so uh, you'd occasionally have somebody who would say that they were stuck up, but it was kind of like, well, have you tried being in their shoes or done their job? Yeah, outside of equity, I, I rarely saw or heard anything negative or different about entertainment they were just different so disney characters didn't really live up to the rumors only like the equity people the equity people did um with the characters themselves i i was generally i felt pretty welcome among them i mean i i wasn't entertainment so i wasn't part of them in that sense so i was a little bit different but i generally felt welcomed and they were friendly to me um uh, you know if we shared a break room you know, I would generally try to stay out of their way because it was their break room. But I, I never really felt unwelcomed or left out or excluded in any way. And I'm going to leave a link below in the description box for the video collab that I did with Sir Willow on his channel. Because what he just said, like, was kind of shocking to me. Um, yeah, you just go watch his video after you watch mine. And then what was your, or who was your favorite character to work with, with fur characters and or face character, or like, yeah, do them separate, fur character and face character, like, do you remember, I know you said you had a lot of favorite experiences, but who do you I, remember liking? I am terrible about picking individual favorites. Um, because okay. so much will be dependent upon my mood and um, what I'm doing and what's going on. I, I tended to, if I had to pick favorites, it would be the Troublemakers. So Chip and Dale would fall into that realm. Uh, Stitch uh, with the uh, Tinkerbell and her friends. Video was a blast. I only got to work with her a couple times. Uh, managed to sneak in a couple times with uh, Cruella DeVille. Anytime I could get somebody that was a little bit of a mischief maker you know, or something, they tended to be the most fun for me. Now, um, did you work with Cinderella's evil stepsisters? I didn't. I got to see them, but at the time they started coming out to meet people, 
I was actually statused over at Epcot at that point, and oh, okay. they would only allow people who were assigned to Magic Kingdom to work with them. So even if I picked up shifts, I couldn't work with them, which was kind of a bummer. Yes! No, they were hilarious! I still haven't met them. I think my kids would be afraid. But I have, every time I walk by, they're saying or doing something that cracks me up. I, I would actually go into the parks on my own, on my days off, and I would find a place near them, and I would just sit and watch for 40 minutes. Because it was such a show just to watch them interact. Yeah. Now, what about, uh, was Gaston there when you were working there, or had you left already? No, Gaston wasn't there. Um, I left right before they did the huge Fantasyland makeover. So they had announced it, and um, I moved right about the time they announced it. So that's all going to be new to me when I go in January. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, so Vidya. Now, Vidya is not there anymore. No, they got... Um, I know they had moved uh, Tinkerbell and her friends shortly after they got rid of Toontown, but um, I heard it didn't last long. So, yeah, that, that was kind of a bummer to me. Yeah. No, and my daughter loves Tinkerbell so much. I wish Disney would bring back all of the other um, fairies, but, you know, who knows what Disney, why Disney does what they do sometimes, so... I, I know when I was there, when they started talking about the remake of the whole Fantasyland thing, um, and I don't know if this building is still there or not, but the old Fantasyland Skyway building, um, and they may have gotten rid of it with the whole Fantasyland makeover, but if it was still there, there was a rumor at one point that they were going to turn that into Tinkerbell's place, um, which I thought would have been really cool. But I want to say that's gone. I want to say. Yeah. Comment below. If you know. I'd be surprised if it's still there after that huge makeover. But My next question for you is, did seeing the characters backstage upon initial hiring ruin the magic? Or did the magic get ruined at all for you? I want to know all about that because people have asked me that question. and It, <laughs> it was an eye-opening experience. Um, this is one of the stories I won't tell on my channel. Uh, my first day at Magic Kingdom, we had gone through traditions over at uh, Disney University. And so I was coming into the Magic Kingdom on the cast bus, riding in from the parking lot, going through security. And then we would come over the bridge, and at the time, Toontown was right there. And so right as we made a left turn, I'm on the bus, I'm looking at everything for the first time, and wow, this is cool, this is exciting. And there's a picnic table that's sitting right behind Toontown. And Cinderella's on break. You know it's Cinderella because of her hair. And she's in a t-shirt and her bloomers, no dress, and she's got her cell phone in one hand and a cigarette in the other. <laughs> it was like... That, that is such a ter stereotypical backstage cast member story. Yep. And, and it was just looking at the bus, you know, looking at that on the bus and going, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to reality and... Keep in mind, backstage and on stage are two completely separate things. Yeah, for the most yeah. part, I want to say the Disney princess characters, having worked with them, I felt like in general they were healthy people, with the exception that sometimes a, on occasion you would get one that did smoke, and it always seemed yeah. like it was a Cinderella. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. I knew a Jasmine that smoked it. I don't know. It's probably to help keep fitting in the costume who knows <laughs> I don't know. that's I, that's not necessarily true I'm just joking here but you know but um no but yeah the smoking thing so did that kill it for you what do you think what what went through your mind um it was just kind of like a okay that's right the magic th that you're used to seeing in the parks is is going to be different backstage it's not the same um and I have done dramas and plays, and so it was just kind of like the... For me, it was the reminder, you know, hey, remember what happens backstage stays backstage kind of thing. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> forgot about that. There's still people. <laughs> so. There's still people, exactly. And it is kind of disheartening. Like, I, I guess I haven't shared that that much, but it is a little bit like, oh... Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Pluto isn't the same for me anymore. I loved Pluto so much. <laughs> before getting hired and I still love Pluto a lot but not as much I'll be honest. Pluto Pluto was a fun character to work with Pluto could get through to some kids that 
other characters couldn't. Um, yeah. It just, kids love to pet his nose, which was funny. Um, we had one guy who did Pluto at, at Toontown that I don't know how he did it, but he was amazing at untying shoes. And, you know, with those big old paws, I don't know how he managed this. But he would, there was like three or four of us photographers he loved to pick on. And he would sneak up and slide around and just grab our shoelaces and untie them. <laughs> it was, how do you do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, Pluto was very heavy and hard on my body. So I could not be 100%. I never built a, I feel like guys were better suited, this is me stereotyping, but I felt like they were better suited for the costume. They actually outperformed me, I felt, or, or just girls in general. I'm stereotyping, but that was my experience of what I saw. Even if we did have some girls who were good at it, I remember one girl, she got sick in the costume. She oh, was performing yes. so hard that she got her just physically demanding. It's a, it's, I feel like it's better suited for guys. That's yeah. my experience. I don't know. The head on that one, and that was, I, I got to try on a, a couple of the heads, and the head on that one was a tough head. Oh, you tried it just on. Was, yeah, I did get to try that one on. Um, I tried on a Mickey, and I tried on um, a Pluto, and um, I'm trying to remember the other one. Oh, Donald. Tried on Donald. And Pluto was easily the most uncomfortable, at least, you know, my two minutes of wearing it, uh, just because the nose just felt like it threw it off balance. Yes. Throws your balance off. Your back is aching the next day because it's so heavy on the shoulders. That's why I felt like guys tended to have more upper body strength. I was so weak upper, like, my, I didn't have, I never exercised, like, didn't have my shoulders built up, and so it was very heavy. I, that's, I'm glad you tried it on, though. That's kind of cool. What do you think about your vision? Vision. Oh. <laughs> Depending upon the outfit, I mean, that was a good one. Um, a lot of them were just... Yeah, Pluto was this. <laughs> so, and, and that was one of the reasons, um, as part of the character training, they had us try on the head so we could see that not only are these things heavy... Not only are they hot, but yeah, your your vision, we're used to seeing this, and it is just this narrow little spot. What about breathability? Do you remember the air inside the heads? Um, well, I knew that it would get very humid and hot and um, not a lot of airflow. Um, there's a lot of people think that there's these fans and air conditioners in the heads, and there's not. <laughs> Unless they've changed something. When you tried on the head, were you indoors in an air-conditioned room, or were you outside in the blazing 80? We, we were inside. We were actually in one of the practice rooms, and we had probably about um, two dozen photographers, 15 to 20 of us or so, all with training. And we had um, a couple actual character performers were there with us, and then they had brought in a couple extra costumes, so that way... We could just see the pieces and get a feel so we would have an idea what the performers had to deal with and what they got to endure while they were working. Now, does Disney teach you how to actually use a camera, like with all the fancy terms like f-stop and shutter speed slash release, or is it like a dummy-proof camera that they give you? Like, how hard is this training to use the camera? They're regular SLR cameras, uh, DSLRs, so they've got all the bells and whistles and knobs and all of that. Um, if I remember right, it was like two or three days that I went through training on how to use the camera and take the pictures um, and then actually go out and doing it. And so they do cover what F-stops are and um, the apertures and shutter speed and all that. But then um, for each location that you're at, they also have fixed set settings that you have to put your camera to this. You know, you know, We almost always shot on P, um, which is the programmed um, audio. It's a semi-automatic mode. We would use the night shot setting where it did most of the settings for us. There were a couple spots that we would shoot on something different. But for the most part, they said, okay, at this location, you're going to shoot with your camera set to P and your metering set to this and your ISO set to this. And, and you would just go through and just make sure your camera matched those settings and then uh, go shoot. So you would know, but they wouldn't necessarily let you play with it a whole lot. Um, now... I kind of got spoiled 
a little bit because I was there early on and I got to learn a lot more than a lot of people did that eventually I got to do something at Epcot called roving, which basically meant I got to wander around the world showcase and just take whatever. And so there I had some freedom to play with my settings that other people didn't because I was going into different locations and doing different things. But for the most part, photographers weren't allowed to do that. They were said, shoot this this way. And then if they didn't, they got retold. Um, a, a good example, when we first started shooting uh, what we called Partners at Magic Kingdom, and that's where you've got the statue and then the castle. And the idea is to get the castle and the, or sorry, the statue, the castle, and then the guests right here. So you'd have kind of this little pyramid thing. And the number of photographers who could not get that lined up and set up right just by hand holding it, that they eventually had to bring in tripods and say, look, lock it on the tripod. You can't move anymore because you can't shoot it right. <laughs> and th that was kind of sad because even the photographers who could shoot it got stuck on tripods at that point. But. But yeah, that's why the tripods are at certain locations in some parks all day long now, because too many people couldn't get the shot right. Wow, and I guess it's because the demand for photo pass has gone up so much, is that, and so they, they just need more people, and so maybe they can't always hire people who have a knack for it, or? That, um, when I started, we didn't have any college program um, at the beginning of photo pass. By the time I left, we were bringing in a few college program, and it has now increased a lot. Uh, but we had people, a lot of who knew photography or who were willing to take the time to learn. And so we had a lot more freedom and flexibility than they do now. Uh, and it was also one of those deals that PhotoPass was pretty new. When I started, we had a lot of people that would walk up to us and, you know, you're staying there in the on the street, you know, greeting people. Hey, how are you doing? No, thank you. You don't want a hello. Okay. Uh, but they were so used to getting hounded for pictures, and PhotoPass changed that. So for a little while, we our sales were actually a little bit down compared to the past because we were changing the atmosphere of it. But I noticed within two or three years that the demand had massively increased. Once people became aware of what PhotoPass was and how it worked, it, we would be crazy busy sometimes. Yeah, and, and with our annual passes right now, every photo pass image is free. We just download it to our phones. Totally professional shots. It's great. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we even use it like almost as a backup for just in case of our, maybe maybe the photo pass people can get a shot that we can't get or a better shot. And uh -huh. Well, and it makes it fun if you're going to see a character, too, that you don't have to worry about staying there taking the pictures because somebody else is doing it for you. Right, right. Um, so my next question is, what celebrities did you see, meet, or hear about? You know, of course, Disney has the big prohibition against if you see a celebrity, you don't go greet them and say hi and get autographs and stuff. So I generally didn't meet any Um and part of that, too, was because I lived in Southern California for several years, and you literally see them all over the place out there, and you just get used to leaving them alone so they can have their private time. Uh, but I did run into, um, almost physically ran into Miley Cyrus in the tunnels, in the Utilidors one time, because uh, she was coming through with her entourage, and I happened to be coming right out of our base, which is right by the Main Street break room. And, oh, hello, big crowd! And realize they're walking away. Oh, that was Miley Cyrus. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then uh, cross paths. Uh, just missed seeing Joan Rivers. Uh, saw Tom Bergeron backstage a couple times. Uh, I remember being at Epcot one time when uh, the one of the, one or two of the Jonas Brothers and uh, oh, what's her name? The one she was dating one of them at the time. Uh, Taylor Swift. No, not Taylor Swift. Uh, oh, goodness. I'm going to go blank. I'll remember it in a little bit. She had her own TV show on Disney Channel at the time, too. Uh, but I, I passed the Jonas Brothers, in any case. Um, so I had a lot, I had several people that I passed and just missed, uh, especially during Christmas time when they had all the different celebrities doing the candlelight. And invariably, I would end up breaking right near where they were kind of uh, hiding in their buses and stuff. And so I had a few times I passed, uh, like, uh, Stephen Chris Chapman I passed a couple times, Michael W. Smith I did once, uh, Chichi Rivera I saw one time. Um, it, and so, again, a lot of it was just kind of passing and you know, and smile hello and you just 
keep right on going. <laughs> right. Yeah. During Christmas time, I feel like that's when all the celebs come to Disney. It's a great place to be, honestly. <laughs> They go all out with their decorations. I love Epcot. I'm a huge Epcot fan, so. Yes. Disney Yacht and Beach Club decorations. I feel like that's almost like you have to go. Yacht Beach over Club was neat. Boardwalk. We always loved the Grand Floridian. The giant gingerbread house in the middle of the lobby. That was just so cool. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Yacht and Beach Club had the gingerbread house too. Did they, I, for some reason, I was thinking theirs was chocolate. Oh, maybe you're right. I need to go back. No. It's been a couple of years, and, I guess. And unfortunately, I I never got a good picture of that one either. I had the chocolate carousel at the boardwalk, but I never got the Yacht and Beach Clubs. Yeah, all the resorts go all out. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> what about your all-time favorite Disney memory? Not necessarily with a character or doing your photo pass job, but just in general, what? what? <laughs> well, if you go all-time favorite Disney, um, I actually have a, a whole video where I talk about it, um, and it was right after 9-11. It was the first time we ever took my kids to Disneyland in California, and their first time walking in the park, we had extra magic hours. Park was empty. There's nobody there, and we ended up running into Mickey as he was coming out. He actually walked my kids right up to the castle at Disneyland. So, personally, that was my favorite. Um uh, as far as working at Walt Disney World goes, though, it was over at Toontown. It was with the characters. And I will never forget this. I actually, one of my early videos, I talk about it. And I was working in, I believe it was the princess room I was in. One of the rooms. And we got to make a wish request in. And this girl was very sick. Sicker than the vast majority of Make-A-Wish kids. Um, she was coming in one of the little portable hollow, um, hospital beds. And so they actually closed Toontown temporarily. And they brought all nine of the characters that were there over into this room with this girl. And all nine gathered around. And uh, one of the other photographers, two of the other photographers, took over pictures. And so I just got to stand back on the wall and watch. And just an incredible magic moment watching these characters pour love upon this sick girl who was probably about 10, 11 um, something like that. And um, just neat. I, you know, of course, we're all sitting back there crying because it's so wonderful and everything. And um, a couple hours later, I was coming back from a break and had walked past um, my base where we get our uh, equipment and the coordinator was standing there crying. I'm like, what's wrong with you? What happened? You remember that girl that came through earlier? Yeah. She's gone. And so this girl's one of her last moments was that love fest in the Toontown room. And just to be able to hold on to that, to be able to watch it and, and know was, was very special. Oh, my word. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's one that'll... <laughs> it's, that, that probably happened within the first three to four months after I started working in... Uh, after that, I was like, okay, it's so sad, but man, I love this job. <laughs> right? No, I mean, what a special, wow. I Especially if it's when you're new there, too. Like, it, it gives you an idea for what you're doing, you know, yeah. when you work at Disney. It, it, even, not even a character, I mean, it could be any anybody in, who is working in Disney, interacting with guests, has an opportunity to make a magical moment. Even a janitor, you know. Yeah. Some, of, and, some of my favorite memories as a guest are with janitors. And, and that's one thing I love with Disney is they really drill into you that this isn't just a job. This is a way for you to impact other people. And so it, it's bigger than just a theme park worker. It's more than that. Yeah, because you've got people who are like that girl, that situation, and then people who have saved up for how long just to come over to have a vacation with their family, family reunions, people are celebrating, or else they are um, people who maybe that maybe a, somebody, a loved one has passed, and they actually come there to cheer up, you know. 
some after some kind of something brings them there you know wow that story i can't even imagine especially you were a parent yes. already yeah my kids at that time were not much younger than than that girl they they weren't far off wow and it, and you also it makes you probably appreciate your, you know, I imagine like you came home and hugged your kids. Yes, like, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely one of those times where I came home and I grabbed and they got squeezed and I'm like, what's wrong with you, Dad? You just shut up and let me hold you for a little bit. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, is anyone else? Comment below. I'd love to hear your guys' reaction to Sir Willow's story right now. I would love to read what you have to say. Um, do you have any memories? Share them with us. We would love to hear. So... Wow. Okay, next question. <laughs> it's hard to move on after that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 